forget, tomorrow you've got your endoscopy and colonoscopy. <laughs> I said, well, wait a minute, honey. Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, start fasting now. I said, well, wait a minute. That's going in at both ends. <laughs> she said, she said, well, you know, our, our Medicare plan will not cover two bouts of anesthesia. Yeah. So we're just going to give you one bout of anesthesia right. and and go in both ends simultaneously. Yeah. Hope they meet in the middle. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I said, well, that's that's not that's not funny. I'm not having a good time thinking about it. But anyway, so you know, hopefully it's just an April uh, Fool's yeah, joke. I'm, but sure I'm not is. sure. I'm not sure. We're gonna have to figure yeah. that one out. Yeah. I don't know. That I'm gonna go home tonight. Well, I'm gonna have to, you know, yeah. you know, shack out in a barn somewhere. Yeah. Neither with, one of those procedures. With the cows and the chickens. <laughs> uh, all right. Where do you want to start today? Well, it's you know, I I haven't had a chance to read the papers. Uh, but uh, I grabbed them out of the mailbox this morning, yeah. and I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of intrigued by some of the stories that we're getting here because uh, one of them in the New London Day above the fold, inside Hunter Biden's China deal. Wow, above the fold. Above the fold. On the day. The China. Yeah, the day. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. You know, Joe Biden's son. This must be a big story. You can't talk about him. Because you can't talk about him. You know. Wow. President's son had control of entities that were paid four point eight million dollars. So I'm just going to do the headline. But you know, that's a that's a headline that uh, I word. might want to pursue. Yeah, sure. It kind of sounds, sounds like, like news, what we've been yeah. talking about for the last year. Yeah. So I looked down, and of course, what is I'm looking to see who, who they get it from. I'm looking to see it from the New York Post, but it's not. It's from the Washington Post. Oh, wow. So now you see the New York Times has admitted that, oops, the laptop was real. Now, they didn't do it up front. Yeah. They, they buried it in a, in a story on Hunter Biden's tax evasion. Yeah. So when you look, you say, Hunter Biden engaged in tax evasion. Most people are going to say, eh. Who cares? Yeah. You know, they all do it. Yeah. Everybody does it. Sure. <laughs> I mean, even you do it. <laughs> you know, let's 40, not, let's 40, not say that out loud. 47% of Americans don't pay income tax. Yeah. Sounds like tax evasion well, to me. No. Well, I, I mean, pay come my on. income tax. Well, That's, think about it. Yeah. You know, all this talk about the billionaires. Yeah. Who made their money? They didn't steal of course. it. They made it. That's right. But we're going to take it away. Of course. Got they avo they yeah. avoid taxes, yeah. which means if they lose $100 million, they're allowed to write it off, yeah. their income. Yeah. So what happens if you make $100 million and $40, yeah. but you lose $100 million? How much did you actually make? Forty dollars. So you make pay taxes on forty dollars, yeah, right. which may be nothing, mm. because most people who make forty dollars a year don't, don't pay, pay taxes. Sure. So then, Warren Buffet's secretary, yeah. who makes maybe eighty to a hundred thousand dollars, sure, and no write-offs, yeah, because she didn't lose anything, yeah. and you're not allowed to write off your gambling losses, yeah. Oh, she pays five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Not fair. It's not fair. You know. Yeah. It's just it's how stupid it is. And the people that are, are involved know it's stupid. They know it. They know it's stupid. They know it's a, a joke. So anyway, inside Hunter Biden's China deals, the president's son had control of entities that were paid $4.8 million. So the Department of Justice uh, and, the, and the prosecutors in New York, they're looking into it. Wow. I mean, we kind of... When did we say that should happen? A year and a half ago? Yeah, right Two before the Two years ago? Yeah. Before, well before the election. Sure, yeah. So that's one headline. Then then we've got the Hartford Courant yeah. here. And they also have a story above the fold, mm -hmm. which is uh, the war in, on the war in Ukraine. Attacks come after pledge to scale back. Mm. Wait a minute, Lee. <clears throat> this is... This is Incredibly yeah. serious. Sure. You mean Putin and the diplomats told Zell and the Yukis, uh, hey, let's make a deal. <clears throat> let's kind of scale back a little bit. What do you say? Uh, I don't think they I don't think that exactly how and it happened. And Zell said, Really? <laughs> I don't think that's and, right. and Putin's guy said, Yeah, <laughs> you know, because you 
Yeah. You've been doing pretty good, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna scale back. Yeah. So then I read I read the first the first paragraph. Yeah. Because that's all that really usually matters. really matters, yeah. unless you're in the New York Times hiding in the twenty fourth paragraph. The laptop is real. The first paragraph says Russian forces bombarded areas around Kiev and another city just hours after pledging to scale back operations in those zones to promote trust, mm. trust between the two sides. Wow. Is that sort of like they're thinking they're going to have a kumbaya moment? I, I Well, I don't know who thought that. I mean, if you were there uh, with the Yuki press and yeah. he was, you know, zealous saying, so Lee, you've been around. What do you think? The, the, the Ruskies... They say they're going to scale back. Yeah. You think it's time to go out and walk around a park? Yeah. You want to join me and walk around the park, Lee? What do you think? What are you going to say? I'm going to say no. I don't You're trust them. Take off Why would I trust them? Jacket. No. Hey, Zell, let's go out and, and talk to the people, yeah. especially those guys over there from the Wagner group. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, no. And then the Wall Street Journal, of course, one, one of my favorite uh, papers here. Uh, you know, Russia... Russia plays down peace talks. Yeah. Moscow dismisses Tuesday negotiations with Kyiv as it steps up assaults in the east. So this this kind of seems to be a little more on the dime here. Yeah. That uh, well, the, 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 this issue about playing down the peace talks is more like the Wall Street Journal previously over the weekend said Russia pivots its focus in Ukraine. So maybe maybe they're taking some of the forces that are stalled in Kyiv and maybe some of the forces that are that are launching rocket attacks and committing war crimes mm. in some of the other cities. Maybe they're pivoting to go east where they had the two breakaway provinces. Maybe they're trying to consolidate whatever gains they're going to get out of this or something like this. But let me ask you this, All right. Lee. Um, what, what would... Uh, the New York Times yesterday had a front page article. Okay. Uh, kind of interesting, which said, at the edge of Kiev, mm -hmm. that's the capital, up Kiev. in the suburbs yeah. of Kiev, uh, Ukrainian patrols find charred vehicles and abandoned armor and these are signs of a Russian retreat. Oh. And then on page eight, with the same story, at the edge of Kiev, evidence of a disorderly Russian retreat. Okay. And, you know, there's a whole bunch of photographs uh, here of the Ukrainian soldiers camping out and, and having a good time here. And then there's evidence of uh, burned out tanks and all kinds of stuff left right. behind and and in the in the process of going into this neighborhood the ukrainians encountered one armored personnel carrier with a bunch of uh, ruskies in it mm. uh, and they all ran away so it didn't look like they were mounting a counteroffensive. so what do you do what do you do when uh you find that the russians are retreating out of a suburb of kiev what, what do I do as a... Yeah, we, I mean, do you have a sort of a Joe Biden moment and say, you know, we won and, and declare a victory and everything's okay? What so, do you do? So I'm there and they're running and I see them. Yeah, do you see... There are... You know, whoa, well, Lee, whoa. What are you, shooting them in the back, Yeah, Lee? I am. No, just... you can't shoot them in the back, Lee. That's not fair. No? No, this is not a video game. These are real people, oh, Yeah, They were going to kill me about well, 20 minutes were? ago. Yeah. Well, usually when they're running away, yeah. uh, in my opinion, yeah. of course, I'm just an Army guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, you know, a CIA guy yeah. running special ops. Yeah. What do I do when I see the bad boys who have shelled hospitals and killed children? Yeah. And, and, and pregnant women dying with their babies, not even born yet. Yeah. What do I do when I see him running? Man, I chase him. Yeah. I go I go right after him. Right. I don't relent. Right. I don't I don't stop chasing until I hit the border and if one of them happens to be running across the border and swings around and says, Home free well, Yeah, right. You got it, baby. No, these are war criminals. Yeah. And and if 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 the if the Russians <clears throat> declared truce and said 
we will now take all of our troops peacefully out of the country. That's a somewhat different, different matter. Yes. But the Russians are not doing that. Putin is not doing that. They're still engaged in hostilities in that country. And I say three cheers uh, to the Ukrainians and to Zell, who stood fast un under the worst of odds. And they've got them. They've they've got them on the run. Yeah. Keep them on the run. Keep them on the run. And when you when you when you look at your military history, <clears throat> you can go to a couple of, of sources. One of them that's not too recent is Sun Tzu. Mm. Yeah. Art of War. Sun Tzu, he's, a, he's Chinese. Yeah. He, he was around a long time ago. Yeah. Like 2,000, 2000 years ago. <clears throat> he says, when you surround an army, leave an outlet free. Why do you do that, Lee? Why do you, if, if the, you've surrounded them, yeah. why do you let them run out one little area? <clears throat> I guess you're giving them the opportunity to surrender. No. No, what am I doing there? No, no. no. If you surround them completely, yeah. they're completely surrounded, okay. what are they going to do? They're going to fight. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of like the 82nd Airborne, right. World War II, uh, where, where McAuliffe, the commanding general of the 82nd Airborne, totally surrounded by the Nazis, got a, a notice from the Nazi commander, we will accept your surrender, and he sent a notice back, and nuts. And... And the German takes the answer back and gives it to the general. And the general's like, what is this? Nuts. What's this? What does he mean? Nuts. <laughs> and right. uh, they spent about half an hour, an hour, two hours trying to figure out what it meant. Right. They, they figured out that, oh, yeah, that means he's not going to surrender. Right. McAuliffe told his troops, they've got us surrounded, the poor bastards. And so what? Right. So, okay, guys, anything, anything outside the perimeter you can kill. Right. It's easy. And we're surrounded. We can't escape, so we're going to fight fight to the death. Right. And they defeated them. So you leave an outlet, because when you leave an outlet, that's where they're going to go. And you know what? When they're running out through the outlet, it's easier to kill them. <laughs> the Chinese aren't stupid. <laughs> they figured it out 2,000 years ago. Uh, you know, they, they say, he goes on to say, do not press a desperate foe too hard. No, get them running. And once they're running, you know, kill them, kill them on the run. So that's what Sun Tzu said. Yeah. How about uh, von Clausewitz? I mean, he was like an Austrian, like a German. You know, this is this is von Clausewitz. And what he said is, he said it's kind of interesting too. In a lost battle, the power of an army is broken, the morale to a greater degree than the physical. In other words, one, once you once you defeat them, and they start running, it, even if they have some weapons and equipment, but their 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 moral power has been defeated. <clears throat> so even if they have some physical means to resist, they're going to keep. They're going to they're go. Right. You, you got to beat. So what do you do? He talks about the second battle. The second battle, <clears throat> unless fresh fi uh, fish circumstances come into play, would lead to a complete defeat, perhaps to destruction. So what's the second battle? That's the, that's. The continued attack. Right. You defeated them. They're running away. Keep going. Don't say, okay, yeah. we'll see you tomorrow. Once you get get some food and get some ammunition and, and get reorganized. Rest up a little see bit. See you tomorrow. Rest yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. See you in the morning. <laughs> uh, morning. 10 o'clock? Yeah. 9.30? Let us know. No, no. You, you don't do that. No. When you see them broken, <clears throat> you go after them hard. Right. Hard. And and try to Crush negotiate a complete defeat. So I've been... I've been I've been quoting the Chinese and the German Austrians, right? Yeah. So, so what would the Americans do? If, if, if we had a situation like this with America, what would we do? Well, uh, I decided to go to one of my favorite generals, Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah. And on April 9th, 1865, a lone Confederate horseman <clears throat> waving a white towel as a flag of truce came into the uh, Pennsylvania Infantry near, near Appomattox Courthouse and asked to see Major General Philip Sheridan. On orders from General Lee, the, the rider had a message requesting a suspension of hostilities. Well, who did he meet up with? This is kind of interesting. He met up with a guy called George Armstrong Custer, who happened to be a general. Okay. You ever heard of him? <laughs> Yo, what, do you, what, what about him? What well, happened he, to him? He didn't, he didn't fare out too well. No, yeah. after the war was over, he, he went after some Indians. Yeah, not and a they good didn't idea. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, don't worry, boys, they're all going to run away. Yeah. But you know what? Yeah. 
Yeah. They didn't? No. About 6,000 of them. <laughs> he had about 180. Yeah. Uh, not good yeah. odds, George. Okay. Better, better you turned around and left. Right. Yeah. But anyway, so Custer sent the writer back to his superiors with the following reply. We will listen to no terms but that of unconditional surrender. Unconditional surrender. Well, how did they reach that point? The South's Army of Northern Virginia was in its final hours. The Union Army, led by Ulysses Grant, had relentlessly, relentlessly pursued the Confederate troops. Right. Well, they're fellow Americans, Lee. Mm -hmm. But he was relentlessly pursued the Confederate troops who were retreating. This time there would be no escape. Lee and his men were famished, exhausted, and surrounded. And Lee said, there is nothing left for me to do but go and see General Grant, and I would rather die a thousand deaths. So you see, if you look even at our own history, at our own Civil War, yeah. which in many respects was the most vicious, bloody, uh, and unfortunate war in our history, right. really, yeah. uh, how did it end? It ended by relentlessly pursuing the enemy uh, in defeat right. until they had no option but unconditional surrender. So my, I guess my word to uh, Zell and the boys is uh, don't quit now. And my word to Joe Biden and NATO and the G20 is if you relent now, you're just as bad as a war criminal. You're just as bad as a war criminal. All right, we got to take a break. We got a bunch of people on hold. Quick break through the top of the hour. Your phone calls. We continue with the great Colonel Rob Simmons. Next. Stick around. You're listening to 94.9 News Now. It's going to be very tough. Good job, Colonel. That's what we do.